And next day, hello, Ma, good afternoon, Ma. Ah, yes, my. Oh, my good God. Hello, Ma. Hello, Ma. Nigerians in the UK, they seem to know their rights more than if they are an easy uh, way. I know my rights. You can even carry your shoe and drop it there to collect tomato. How, how much? How much? 150. I could do 40. And that pricing thing. It's not called for every time. I'm talking about the city I don't live in, the school I do not go to. Like, is it that like you think me and Prime Minister Boris Johnson have one meeting in the evening? Like, there's nothing I would know that you wouldn't know from the internet as you're in Lagos now for example do you know the price of school fees in Enugu University of Nigeria Suka do you know hi there welcome to my channel my name is Stephanie and I'm a London based content creator if this is your first time here welcome please click the subscribe button and the bell right beside it if this is not your first time mwah, i love you thank you so much for coming back i'm alone and i was just thinking to film something instead of just sitting around i'm going to jump on this video title i've been saying it's called unpopular nigerian opinions things that nigerians kind of believe that i don't think is right or i don't kind of believe it so i just mentioned a few of them i can drop in the comment section if there are any other opinions you think that are very unpopular to yourself or if you relate to any of these ones i'm going to mention so the first one guys is people calling me ma you know how you're trying to chat with someone, maybe you need a service or something with someone in Nigeria and then you get your contact and the next day, hello ma, good afternoon ma, ah yes ma. Oh my good god. Hello ma. Hello ma. Hello ma. Hello ma. Ma, ma, nah, calm down. I know why they do it, because I know it's not a sign of respect or anything. They're just probably trying to tell you that I really need your money or yes madam, you have so much money or you know, it's just very, very annoying. So I just usually just tell them, please call me, this is my name, like call me my name, stop doing all this in my thing because I think it's very very pretentious as well <laughs> and then the cousin to this man one is sis hey dear god that's sis and it's because to me it just comes from a place of i don't know gossip most of the time nigerian girls are your workplace who you don't even really relate with and then the day you say hello do a hi sis nah boo like when you're having lunch you're probably talking about me or something like which one is hi sis just say hello step or just say hi like wave don't start saying hi sis or even on instagram like you're just annoying when some random souls. I understand when we're doing our black and proud and maybe fellow people you, are, you actually chat with, you now tell you sis. I don't know, it just annoys me when I just hear that sis, hey sis. Nah. Last time I was in Nigeria, I visited one of all these local shops just around your house to buy something. And there was a lady at the till. She, she was done calculating and I paid cash and I tried to pay with. Do you know she did not collect this thing? They had no that can you pay me with your right hand? So I didn't even know if. So I know some people take it as a thing of respect. There are some countries like India, I think Nepal, one of all those Asian countries that is in their culture that the left hand means something, maybe bad luck or something. But is that really a Nigerian thing? Like you would want to just maybe your my right hand. I can't remember what I was even doing with the right hand. I just because ideally I'll give with my right hand because I'm right handed. So why is someone is left handed? You get like why would you literally deny someone a service or something because they gave you money with the left hand? Or is there another connotation to it? So yeah, I just find that very, very odd. We are, we are very, very entitled, especially for my parents. We just expect so much. This could be Pepsi. Let's just say you're traveling now. <laughs> People you don't even know, like, well, as long as they shall mistakenly find out that you're traveling, or they are expecting goody goody. They even text, text you to find a way to tell you on your Instagram that ah, when you come back home, you <laughs> You know, and then okay that's the one playful you have be in your parents house from when you were born primary school secondary school uni in fact they will still pay for your masters and to still some people are still very shaky with things like from secondary school you should start thinking your holidays in secondary school like what are you even doing to bring in something to the house you just expect our parents to do everything for us i guess that's how maybe the, because the government doesn't really help and stuff like that maybe that that's what gives us that sense of entitlement then again i also find nigerians in the uk they seem to know their rights more than even the people that live in come on down the easy way i know my rights all right you want to play it the hard way pay your salary, you want to play it the hard country, like they know what they deserve anyway most of them are paying taxes yes yeah, so i understand but i just find nigerians to have some certain form of entitlement okay i don't know if it's just me but nigerians complain a lot like i've worked in companies where i had a lot of nigerians as colleagues and but they'll effect a little change and then the first thing is complain and the complain is like all that kind of cha 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 complain not complain that they will raise in the meeting and talk about you just be complaining about this of moving forward and getting things done they just have that need to always just first of all complain about something you know it's just very annoying 
Another example is social media. For instance, someone dies, and obviously when someone dies, everybody, like if you really knew the person or if you're touched by the person, maybe just even by looking at the person's pictures, you can be touched by somebody by looking at the person's pictures, and you know everyone is now doing RIP, oh my god, oh my god. And you see see some people who come out when, when they were alive, did you treat them nicely? Did you show us that you love them? Like, seriously, do I wake up every morning and post my father, my mother, my brothers, and everybody I love on Instagram? I'm like, you wouldn't. Now, but when someone passes, you don't even need to know the person to, you know, feel very bad about the person's death. You get so rested. Another example, some people go to give charity, and then they're posting it, sharing it on social media. You see people still complaining, can't you go and do it in secret? Can't you go? They shouldn't do it in secret. Like, giving, showing people that you're, you know, giving stuff to charity is actually inspiring people and reminding them that, oh, you can actually do that. So I just feel... We just have a way of complaining about everything. Like, no matter how something is, you must just find a way. Twitter is the, the whole, the deepest hole of this. Place. Like, we can all be talking about roses and how beautiful they smell. Oh my god, stop. Why are you even smelling rose? Why is your nose smelling? Why is. Like, the <laughs> people that just find a way to bring out an issue from non issues and then complain about it. And I don't really like that. But I think it's only Nigerians that do it. But yeah, because obviously that's my society. But yeah, I don't really like it. Oh my gosh. This one, by God's grace, <laughs> it's so tiring. It's just very annoying when you cannot sit down and put your efforts and all the energy you have to do something. Instead, you do half of it and leave the rest to be God's grace. I understand divine favor and the fact that some things, you, no matter how much hard work you put, you know, it's still going to be either luck or blessings or favor and stuff like that. But no, but do your best. Whatever is worth doing is worth doing well. So it's just annoying when there's things you can do to pass an exam, like there's books you can read to begin to the end to pass an exam, but you just do half of it and be saying that by God's grace, I'll do it by God's grace. Nah, by God's grace, yes, but you know, heaven helps those who help themselves. Like, you have to always give God something to work with. So I don't really, I'm not a person who even likes hope, you know, I hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully it's so annoying because if you can control something man do your best for it You get what is where you can control it fine. You can now be hopeful But that by God's grace and leaning back on things when there are still stuff and stages you can take Nah, I don't really like it and I get it a lot from Nigerians Okay, this one might sound very annoying but because obviously there are some places where it should occur but pricing things so I think it's some of all the sellers that even cost it because some people will post a product or something on their Instagram for example and they'll say CDM for price. Why are we going into the DM to sell tomato? How about you just write the price there and let me move it? Do you want to set price according to my followers or do you want to set price according to the way I asked you for it? Like, I don't even understand why people would just do that. And then you guys, some of you, you see the price, you now enter the DM that did not call you to enter and be asking, can we do? No, we can't, especially when it's a small business. Please just pity the person <laughs> and pay the price. If not, leave the product. Jiggers. It's just annoying when people price the most annoying things. Like sometimes even a service now starts. Mm -mm, don't price, don't price. And they always price small people, small businesses. Go and see H and M be pricing their sandals now in their DM. She get like just leave that act of pricing. Do it when you're in the market in the souk or wherever you go to. You know, banter and bargain and stuff. You can even carry your shoe and drop it there to collect tomato. How how much? How much? Hundred fifty. I could do. 40. Okay, maximum 120. Okay, get, yeah, so I don't really like that pricing thing. It's not called for every time. The way we punish kids, I'm spending what I'm for the child. Yes, I understand that, but please, you don't have to be slapping your kids. Like, growing up, most of us were flogged with water canes. Some people thought they will put pepper and make you get injury, stoning, you know, just for little things that we had done wrong. Even some kind of punishment where they will say, kneel down, <coughs> kneel down and fly your arms, carry this like this, do like, like all that unnecessary physical stress. It's not that necessary. Maybe to a little extent you can spank someone, but unnecessary physical stress and punishment doesn't even stop anybody from doing what they want to do. It's just, it's just dehumanizing a child. Why don't you talk to the child instead? Let them understand where you're coming from, understand where they're coming from, and then just set them right. Because no matter how you cage and flog, and at some point, the child's going to leave the house. So you de dehumanizing them might even make them lose confidence, which is not necessary. So let's just keep all those kids, all those unnecessary slapping away, please. That's a very, very, I know some people still believe in spanking and beating up their kids anyhow around the whole place, but nah, it's 
not something I subscribe to. Another thing I think um, we practice as Nigerians, especially parents, is not preparing our kids for adulthood. Let's say for instance now, summer holiday, what's your child doing? She's probably just doing one lesson at the back of the house. Some of them are not even doing lessons. They're probably going on holiday. Holiday is good. Traveling is good. It's very, very insightful. It's very, very good to travel and experience different other cultures. But just try and make your kids work a bit. Let them understand money more. If you have any spare time, you should be learning either a skill or just developing your knowledge or intelligence. Yes, you've come back from school, but then again, you should still know that you need to do things. You need to be useful for money to come. Let them understand money more. Let them know how important it is to work hard and get paid for it. It could even be in the house. If your kids are really small, you just know the way you do this, do this, do this, you know, I'll give you this, you know, we'll save for this. But most importantly, like, especially when you're in like senior secondary school, when you're coming back on holiday, you should be working somewhere. Do a three month inter do a one month internship, a two month internship. These experiences add up in the long run. That's how most of you, most of us, when we come back from school and we're looking for jobs, and there, people are asking you, do you have how much experience you have? I'm, you'll be, you'll be wondering, thinking you should just have been working after uni. No, from your secondary school, your holidays, whatever. Yeah, now there's the internet, so even while okay, let me not say while you're in school, you should be doing work, but there's so many things you can do as work and, and as you know, work experience that you don't have to show up. That's something we should explore as Nigerians just making the best of extra time our kids have, you know, before they actually face the world, just to prepare them better for understanding money and understanding how the world actually works. Also, learning how to save, learning how to read books and understand books and practicalize them. So, save, learn to invest, and learn to read books. That's the culture I would, I don't think is that popular amongst Nigerians, and I think we should invite more. Another annoying one, the fact that someone doesn't live in Nigeria, the fact that someone lives in a certain country doesn't mean they know everything. But then I got a DM that um, our school is going to open in September as a master. First of all, the person was talking about the city I don't live in, a school I did not go to. Like, is it that like you think me and Prime Minister Boris Johnson have one meeting in the evening? Like, there's nothing I would know that you wouldn't know from the internet, you guess, I didn't even go to your school, you're asking me the tuition fees for master somewhere, like, go and check the internet, there's, I don't know that, like, as you're in, as you're in Lagos now, for example, do you know the price of school fees in Enugu, University of Nigeria, Suka, do you know, like, do you know the courses they're doing, they're like, there's some kind of annoying questions, maybe a phone will come out, what's the price of iPhone 11, I'm not your sister, so why are you asking me, can't you, the same way I'll go and check online, would I, do you think I'll go to the store to line up, like, yeah, some things are just annoying. I'm just wondering why someone even asking me this question. So please, the fact that we live here doesn't mean we know every single thing that is happening here. Like talking about living abroad, a lot of people, Nigerians just assume everybody abroad is having fun. Life is just so easy for everybody. School is just so easy. Like trust me, when you even come to school here from most Nigerian universities, you realize you were joking with the way you were writing your papers, your essays. You understand plagiarism more, referencing, and you just realize that come assignment here is not assignment you do in Nigeria. You can just do copy paste, and everybody just multiply everything, and you know you get a good score. So it's not easy in school. Then when you even come out of school, getting a job, fine, is more fair. There's fairness here. Like everybody will apply, and they'll give the people who actually deserve it most of the time, compared to in Nigeria. But it's still not easy. By the time you get that job. You have to live somewhere, pay your rent monthly, your feeding, you're living somewhere like London, your transport costs, like for you, everything is gone. You get, it's just lovely because there's this there's a structure that works. You can pay for something and you're sure you get it. You get those are you think, but that doesn't mean things are easy for people here. The, and another thing is that there is dignity of labor here. There's some kind of work that you would never see yourself doing when you're in Nigeria, but you come here and you're doing it. You get, so don't even be thinking people are having it because you see someone posting in front of one nice place with blue skies on Instagram you now think life is so rosy and they start sending your demands or you'll be angry that your sister is not picking up your call or someone is actually like this pound the way it's heavy is the way it also leaves your pockets heavily you know the thought that every girl's goal is to get married that's a very popular one especially these days it's not everybody a lot of girls now run to just get married because of pressure and yeah they don't even understand it so we go to primary school secondary school uni we don't go to any place that actually teaches you what marriage is so if your mothers are actually tolerating nonsense so you can't even say you want to learn about marriage from them so really people don't even understand what it is and some people who know their whole hearts of hearts that they're not even interested in marriage just because of society and the you know opinions of the typical nigerian that everyone wants to get married even your mother's friends 
when they call your mother to ask her how is Ijoma they're not even asking to know whether I'm healthy strong and kicking and happy in life they want to find out if I'm single they want to find out if I'm married now get married now let them call your mother again they are asking how is it your man, not because they want to know whether her and her husband are beautiful and happy in the house. They want to know children, now give birth to... As in Jigen, like, it's not everybody that wants all this. So, it's very annoying in Nigeria when they just feel, if you're single, you're just like, they just assume you want to get married. Like, that's the next thing for you. Or if you don't think you're, you're sad or how you even cook. And that's when I was in the baby shower and then someone was like, someone just mentioned me that, oh my god, she actually waited, she actually tried to... I was like, did you, she actually tried to have waited, she used the word, and I was like, did she tell you she was actually searching for a child? Like, I know it's a normal Nigerian thing, I'm like, no, but that's a very, very wrong, what if she wanted some time? Like, I don't know, we should just stop all that expectation of what you think you want is what everybody wants, so, because that's what leads me people to make mistakes, so yeah, that's a very annoying opinion. Okay, I think I have two more. This one is just the fact that a girl is showing her legs, showing her cleavage doesn't mean she called for anybody to sexually assault her. In Nigeria sometimes we don't even know what the sexual assault is to be honest. Like there are some things we just already see as normal. Someone just touching you randomly, just someone standing awkwardly around you in an elevator, or someone looking at you. Like there's just some kind of irritating things that happen and then when it happens to the girl, everyone's blaming her for how she dressed, where she was, why she was even at day at night, you know, all this kind of nonsense. Please, 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 please. That is a very disgusting opinion that I do not succumb to. Last but not the least, guys, I don't know who gave us the fact, I know who gave us, but please, let's collect it with sense. Religion. Your pastor is not your God. He's probably just, he is just a guide or someone who you can always ask questions if you feel you want to talk to or just someone to guide you weekly or bi-weekly or whatever, however it is. Or someone to help me remind you of the message of God. But you all have brains. We all have brains. It's just crazy when... Like, especially mothers, I mean, they all pray. <laughs> like, there's always someone, one prayer person for a mom. Like, my friend got engaged the other day, and her mom was like, You have to come and pay this man. He was praying for you, I've been praying for you. Like, all oh, that nonsense. People will be ill. Instead of them going to the hospital, they're taking them to somewhere to go and pray, for one man to pray, collect money, thousands and thousands of money from you to go and pray. So, that's a very, very annoying opinion. The way we carry religion in night. Be spiritual, have a relationship with God, but also use your common sense. God gave us free will to also decide on things. You don't leave important decisions to be decided for you by your pastor, your priest, or whoever. So that's just my last um, unpopular Nigerian opinion. Are there any ones you think um, I didn't mention that you think are popular for you and very annoying? Please drop it in the comment section. And then if you relate to any of these, please also let me know. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed, please do and click the bell right beside the subscribe button. Please click the thumb up button on this video. It really helps the video get recommended. And yeah, I'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.